very good. As a country, we've always embraced the future and discussed many big ideas about what the future may hold. All of us have a common interest in the future. Kids. What does the future hold for them? Our current system is failing our kids and our country. We know that America is falling behind. We are not getting kids where they need to be in reading, science, and math. Education is a critical part of the solution to every problem we face. The key question is, what does the future of learning look like, and how will we create it? When we think about the future, we're usually doing one of two things, dreaming or dreading. When we dream, we start with an idea, a positive trend, and take this idea to its logical conclusion. We imagine a utopia that represents our hopes for all that's possible. Maybe that idea is a belief in the promise of technology to transform learning. What would that look like? We might dream of being able to assess each student's needs and then magically give them exactly what they need, exactly when they need it. But this is impossibly perfect and simplistic, ignoring the complexities of the learning process. When we dread, we start with a fear, a downward trend, and we likewise play out this idea to its logical conclusion. We imagine a dystopia, one filled with our fears of what might happen in the future. Here, the very same issue, the use of technology in the classroom, might veer off in a completely wrong direction with dreadful outcomes. Kids trapped in a matrix of robotic instruction. Of course, this is equally simplistic and ignores technology's potential. Whether dreaming or dreading, our role in the future we imagine is usually passive, where the future is something that happens to us and to those around us. But there's a third way we can think about the future. Between dreaming and dreading lies designing. For designers, the future isn't a far off place. It's a place where they work every day. Design is a form of activism. We imagine the future we want, then pick up the tools to start building it. Designers see the world as a kit of parts. They reshape and reassemble the best pieces from what's already out there to create something new and better. So what does it take to rethink learning? It's not about replication. It's about selecting and integrating many different parts to create the foundation of a new model. This is the art of integrative design. From birth to adulthood, society's purpose is critical to accelerate our learning. And what's most important for kids today is learning how to learn. Society must develop learners ready to tackle challenges they cannot anticipate. <laughs> Education is a system we created to serve that purpose. Over 100 years ago, we invented modern schooling to send kids to one of three main places, the factory, the farm, or the university. We always lost some kids, but this model provided a middle-class life for most, and economic growth. Over time, the economy changed. Farm jobs diminished and office jobs surged. College grads always had better access, but there was also a path straight from high school to the office. As office work changed, it got harder to get there from high school. Eventually, that path disappeared. College became the main path to opportunity. We started sending more kids to college, but we didn't change the overall system. Education broke down, trapping too many kids on paths that no longer made sense for them or for the country. As farm and factory jobs continued to decline, we started to lose even more students. The retail sector rose up to catch them, but these low-skill, low-wage jobs often failed to move kids forward in life. With the decline of good jobs, kids had nowhere to go. Retail increasingly offered the only alternative. We lost even more students to dead-end futures. More high school graduates tried to get into college, but found they were not prepared for success, academically or financially. Fortunately, community colleges emerged to help people re-engage in their own learning and seek new pathways forward. They helped many students get back on track, but most students still found their way to community college on their own, or by accident. Today, far too many kids exit the K-12 system feeling stuck. Our model of school is broken. To understand how it's broken, we need to look inside. 
We see a system of six parts which create a student's experience. First, what they learn, how they learn, and how we know they're learning. And also, where and when learning happens and who's involved. How we configure these parts determines how kids move through the learning process. More often than not, these parts form rigid barriers blocking the way forward or putting kids on the wrong path. Various innovators have focused on adjusting one or two of these parts to help kids move forward. This has spurred important progress, but this approach is not the answer. What we need is learning integrated by design, addressing all parts at once rather than one or two in isolation. When we get this right, we make it possible for kids to accelerate their learning, to move forward in the direction they want to go. The best design models require kid power. Students must apply themselves to the learning process. It's our job to give them this chance, and we believe that's more possible now than ever before. Our research shows that a few key attributes are central to the new models we need. Future of learning models must be personalized, learner-driven, applied, cost-effective, and tech-enabled. And of course, kids don't power this system on their own. For every model, a set of outside conditions can either block its progress or help it take off and really work for kids. Without the right conditions, <coughs> better models cannot take hold and scale. But just imagine what the future of learning would look like if we aligned these new models with the conditions that help them succeed. It would be a future where schools help kids get what they need to become successful learners and to accelerate their learning. But while school remains critical, it's not the only place where learning happens. Kids must be able to explore all their opportunities for learning, both in school and beyond. When we create a single integrated system, students will practice becoming lifelong learners, ready to go on to college or good jobs, ready for the challenges and opportunities of the future that awaits them. This is society's new purpose. We're already mapping this new learning ecosystem. We call our map the human capital continuum, the paths that learners travel from birth to age 26 as they prepare for success in the adult world, and where far too many get stuck at key transition points. At Two Revolutions, we design and launch future learning models and help... So it's only a commercial after this. <laughs> Okay. Um, so I just thought that that video would be helpful. Um, keep in mind, so this is produced by people working in New Hampshire in the education system, right? So sometimes I say, like, if I'm critical of the system, the pushback I get is, oh, you don't appreciate our schools. So these are the experts saying many of the things that Ian has said, many of the things that we are trying to say, and recognizing the... Um, kind of the mandate that we've got to do something different that has kind of been set up. Um, so I think when we think about this video, and I'm going to uh, relate back to that a little bit, but even if you think about the current system, like we're trying to move a system, and that is a very difficult thing to do. But systems are built on premises. In other words, and premises are the things you believe about the system, and I want to challenge kind of the premises that our current system is built on, and I think you as school boards will recognize some of these. Um, so the premise that the current system is built on uh, is that we can educate students as a cohort, right? That there's a certain amount of homogeneity to a certain group of kids, as Ian pointed out, the, the main factor is what day were you born on, right? Like, oh, okay, well, if you were born on this date, plus or minus 180 days, you must be just like all the other kids that were born on this date, plus or minus 180 days. Uh, so that is kind of the cohort premise and the premises that you hold about a system they determine how you see the problems that the system encounters and the questions that you ask about the system and the solutions that you're going to come up with for that system and so again this is really evident uh, when we think about the cohort model and there are certain questions that I hear over and over again relative to the system that just I say to people I'm like you're only asking that question because of what you believe about the system because of your premise about how the system is supposed to function Crop TV.